Operation mode, the first set of experiments that you'll do, um, you'll go to the shaft and then uh, hold it uh, close to the center, close to the mass, and then pull it up, and then you'll let go. As you let go, you'll see that you'll have a signal on the screen, and that signal, you have to freeze it so you'll be able to measure the characteristics of the signal. So I'm going to try to do that. Um, if I can, I'm going to just have to put down the mic, and then you will be able, I'm going to do it with one hand, put, pull it down, and then on the other hand, there is a run control uh, that will freeze the signal. This is run stop, so I'm going to have to push that so I can get a signal uh, on the screen. So hang in there. You see now, if you come closer, uh, we have a signal, and the signal is a sinusoidal, but it is also damp sinusoidal, very similar to what we learned in the, uh, uh, in the, in the class. Um, so in order for us to measure the peak-to-peak -peak value, which is a time uh, distance, a time between the peaks, and to measure the height uh, f uh, the the decrement uh, the decrement from y1 to y2, we have to go to cursors. We have a button here. If we push it out, there's no cursors. Push it in, there will be cursors, and we're gonna select the cursor X first. And X it gives you ability to do X1 and X2. So if we do X1, for example, then we uh, as we move X1, we center it to the peak. Uh, it gives us X1 equals uh, minus 131.2 uh, milliseconds. That's w uh, relative to a reference. The center is a reference. Uh, and then I can push uh, X2. And X2 will bring in the second cursor, which is way to the right. So the second cursor, I'm going to just move it all the way to the second peak. And this is right at the, at the second peak. So the delta X between uh, the two peaks is shown here as 75.48 milliseconds. So if you take that, you invert it, yeah, that gives you the frequency in hertz. Uh, if you multiply by 2 pi, then it gives you the RPM uh, uh, that corresponds to that. Uh, the radial fre frequency that corresponds to the, uh, to the delta x. So to measure now the height, the first height, then I have to go to the y cursor. And the Y cursor is the same uh, dial uh, up here, the sticky dial. Uh, then I'm going to move up the cursor. It goes up to the first height. This is Y1. And then uh, it's, uh, well, it is shown here. Let me just make sure that there's Y1. So Y1 is eight, 80 s 875 millivolts. Then I go to Y2 and bring in the second cursor to go to the second peak, and the second peak is right here, is uh, 734 uh, millivolt. So the delta Y is, um, is the, diff uh, the Y, we just take Y1 over Y2, that will give us a decrement. But obviously this signal is not so good because you don't have sharp decrease between the uh, peaks, so the sensitivity is not going to be high. So in your experiment, you have to make sure that you have enough sensitivity to have uh, a, uh, a, a quite a bit of uh, uh, decrease between Y1 and Y2 to get uh, a good measure of the um, damping uh, coefficient. So and right now we just uh, did one experiment and uh, we are ready to unfreeze this. So we push it here so it is unfrozen. And this is the datum here for the voltage again. And we could do a vibration experiment. So we're going to try to turn on the... Uh, um speed controller to attain uh, the uh, uh, close to the resonant frequency. And we have to do that slowly. OK. As you see, the oscillation, sometimes it goes horizontal, and sometimes it goes vertical. So we'd like to have an oscillation that is vertical, because that is right, right under the uh, fiber optic sensor.
Yeah, so if you look at the oscillation, it is vertical, but it also has kind of a sideway wobbling. So this is still not the best type of oscillation. I think you can play with it to get it uh, nearly vertical for maximum sensitivity. So I'm going to take that one and show you what happens. So you see now the time signal. You have a lot of noise on it. You can uh, just uh, filter that data a little bit. We're using the filter but uh, to get a clean uh, signal. But at any rate, if you have a signal like this, uh, then what you need to do is um, uh, you can do on it two things, uh, either time analysis or uh, Fourier analysis. So in the time analysis, uh, it is already set like here. And again, uh, you uh, actually use the cursors. So you have the cursor is here. And uh, you select X. And uh, But before you do that, you have to freeze the signal. So you have a frozen signal. And uh, you select your X. And you move the cursor to get the first peak. And you select X2 and so on. Just exactly like we did. And then you can measure the heights with the, with the second cursor. So that's the time analysis. The second mode that we have is an FFT. So the FFT gives you the frequency spectrum. So to get to the frequency spectrum, we call it the math mode. So there's a little uh, display button here uh, that's called, uh, that has the word math on it. So if you push that, it gives you another spectrum that has uh, more clarity, sharper in the background. And that other spectrum is actually uh, the Fourier spectrum of that uh, time signal. So it displays the time signal and the frequency signal uh, on top of it. So once you are in the math mode, let's say we're going to stop it here to freeze the signal. We're going to turn off the motor and uh, pay attention now to the signal. Now I have two signals. I have the time signal, which is kind of jagged, and I have the frequency signal uh, using the FFT. Uh, if I go to the settings for the FFT, then it shows me how to control the location of that spectrum. So there's a span and there's a center. And if you push the span, it's now we, we try to make it uh, too close to 200 hertz. Could be 500 or 200, whatever makes the uh, Fourier spectrum visible to you and uh, uh, easier to interpret. And the center also here, this is uh, set at uh, about 100 hertz. So we have now set the span, which is, which is the full span of the frequency range, because we're expecting frequencies of uh, uh, 10 hertz to 20 hertz in that range. So if we set it to 200 hertz, that's good enough. And the center is 100 hertz. This is where we do the, our measurement. So we've done that from the source. And this is source number one. So we just keep it as source number one here, because that's what we are actually analyzing. Um, there's another uh, button here called the uh, uh, more for FFT. So if you push it, uh, you can control the scale of the FFT spectrum. So by changing uh, the scale, as you can see here, I can ch change the scale. Y you have more frequencies coming in. And the offset will move the entire frequency spectrum up and down. So that will be two additional possibilities for you to control where you want to see the FFT. Uh, once this is done, then you can uh, go to the acquire mode. And the acquire mode, you make sure that you are in the normal mode. Uh, and then you are averaging with, uh, say, eight points. So it's an eight point or 16 point average. And now you're ready to do your measurements. So you go to the cursors. And the cursors, again, will allow you to uh, to uh, uh, locate uh, the peaks on the FFT spectrum. Right now, the FFT spectrum is very co uh, complicated because we just uh, finished the experiment and, and we don't have good data. But once you do uh, very uh, good oscillations about uh, the natural frequency, the spectrum is going to be clean and you'll be able to uh, measure the uh, resonant frequency with the FFT method. And that's basically it for the experiment.